Well, 2022 can be dubbed the redemption season when it comes to the Ohio State. The Buckeyes will once again enter the season as the favorite to come out of the Big Ten and then one of the favorites to get into the college football playoffs here when it comes to the conference. Many experts will give them the benefit of the doubt considering they've been at the top of the table when it comes to the Big Ten play there since Ryan Day has taken over, and that may be the case here with a little maybe chip on their shoulder. Buckeyes getting a test right out the gate with Notre Dame in week one, as you see it there, September 3rd, followed by Arkansas State and Toledo. Then at the end of September, open the conference there with Wisconsin, We'll also see Michigan State, Iowa, Penn State in October, then closing out the year with that bitter rival in Michigan. Oh boy, November 26th. That's the one you got to circle one, two, three times if you want to. Our senior college football writer Barrett Talit checking in here with us on HQ. And Barrett, for Ohio State, the standard has been Big Ten title and CFP. The closer we get to week one for the Buckeyes, does that seem like the likely scenario here coming out of that conference? Yeah, there's no doubt. In fact, if I had to pick right now, I would put Ohio State not only in the college football playoff championship game, but might even pick them as my national champion. Look, I think for me, you worry about uh, returning starters at times because sometimes those players aren't very good. Well, at Ohio State, they are excellent. When you talk about C.J. Stroud, who is the Heisman Trophy favorite? Travion Henderson, one of the best running backs in the entire country. Jackson Smith Jigba, who is the best wide receiver in the country. Two potential All-Americans on the offensive line and a new defensive coordinator from Jim Knowles, who has been elite everywhere he has gone. So, yeah, I think national championship, college football playoff at the very worst is exactly where Ohio State needs to be. The schedule sets up well as well. So I think when you look at Ohio State, look, they could even lose the opener. When you go to, when you have Michigan at home and look at that road schedule at Northwestern, at Maryland, nothing to really worry about there. Penn State, eh, not necessarily high on the Nittany Lions. Everything sets up well for Ohio State to make a run. The roster, the coaching staff, the schedule, and then around the world of college football, you really only have four or five teams at most who can win a national championship, and Ohio State's definitely one of them. The one thing standing in the way last year, going all the way, you see it in Michigan there, they'll see them at the end of the year. Jim Harbaugh finally getting over the hump and getting that one win we've seen against Ohio State since he's been there, first conference title. Can they repeat here in 2022, though? No, I don't think so. They've lost too much. When you lose eight of 11 starters, including your two best defensive linemen, potentially the two best in the Big Ten last year, that's a problem. When you lose a, a really important piece in the secondary in Daxon Hill, that's a problem too. And I don't necessarily look at that quarterback situation as healthy as maybe some other people do. Cade McNamara and J.J. McCarthy are just sort of dudes. They're there. They needed Josh Gaddis as that, that ultimate play caller last year. That worked great last year. I don't necessarily know if it's going to be the case this year. Now, with that said, you do have a great player in Ronnie Bell outside, but you need to run the football. And you look at Blake Quorum's stats last year, the majority of his yards, the majority of damage that he did were against extremely weak competition. So Michigan, to me, good. But anything other than like 8-4, and 9-3, and three, I think is a bit aggressive this year. They just lost too much. All right, over in Nebraska, Scott Frost seems to have nine lives when it comes to keep for the job there. <laughs> the Huskers, they went three and nine last season, but some believe that roster is actually better than the record that showcased last year. Could this be the final year if he doesn't turn around here with the Huskers? Yeah, there's no doubt. Anytime your AD and president have to give you a vote of confidence in December, then yeah, the fall is going to be a problem. He's the native son. I, I get it but he has not followed through on all of his promises, especially considering Adrian Martinez was his hand-picked guy and he transferred. That's a massive problem. I think if there is one silver lining though for Nebraska, of their losses last year, eight of were of the one score variety, one score meaning touchdown and potentially two point conversion. So they were close a lot and typically that does even itself out. But with this roster, with this team in a big 10, that is, I think, improving in a Big Ten West that is extremely underrated and quarterback heavy. I just don't see how Nebraska is going to get it done. This team, to me, 
a six and six, seven and five type team, that absolutely will get Scott Frost fired if that happens. If you talk about the West here, Wisconsin may be the only team standing in the way. They're currently best odds, second best in that Western division there. I mean, is there a chance they might be able to contend and trend to the top there, despite of what you just said? No, I don't think so. I just right now, I think with what they have personnel wise, I mean, look, you need an elite quarterback in that division, especially because there are some really good quarterbacks, really established quarterbacks in that division. Is Casey Thompson going to be that guy? I, I don't I don't necessarily buy what he's selling. So I just think for Scott Frost, the offense hasn't clicked the way he thought it was, the way Nebraska's administration thought it would when they hired him out of UCF. So, no, contention for Nebraska in the Big Ten West, in the Big Ten in general, they're just not close to being at that point yet. All right, plus 240 when it comes to winning that Western division out in the Big Ten here. As always, Barisley, appreciate you tapping in. Don't forget, you can catch the fellas on three Cover 3 podcast, always breaking it down and recapping the SEC and ACC media days. All the madness there. Dabo all in on DJ Uyangale. Kirby Smart, oh boy, $100 million man. Expansions, realignment. You think about it, they talk about it. Download and follow at Cover 3. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.